Hi everybody, in this lecture we will already cover chapter number 4 and this chapter is about the meaning of interest rate. This is more linked about what we learned before about present value, future value and discount for future values and so on. First, if we speak about measuring interest rate, we will already talk about present value. Present value means that a dollar paid to you one year from now is less valuable than a dollar paid to you today. This is could be because the impact of inflation or the decreasing of purchasing power. But why a dollar deposited today can earn interest rate and became one dollar plus the interest one year from today. But how can we recalculate this? This is simply represented as following. The principal amount in this case is one dollar plus this principal amount times interest rate. So we can write it generally like one dollar times one plus the interest rate. Here we have an example for the present value. Assuming that interest is 10%. In one year, if we deposit $100, so by the end of the year, it would be 100 times 1 plus interest rate, which is 10 at this case. It will become $110. If we deposit this for the second year, so the principal will become $110 multiply by 1 plus 10% for interest, so finally by the end of the second year we have total equal $121. We can do this simply. We can see that the expression 1 plus the interest rate as a common factor repeated two times, so that we can write it in one statement. 100 times 1 plus interest rate times again 1 plus interest rate or shortly we can write it in ones 100 times 1 plus 10 percent as interest rate to the power 2 because we repeat this two times if we did this for three years the power became three so 100 times 1 plus 10 percent to the power 3 Generally, if you are waiting in years, we will replace the power to become n, and this is the general four. How can we find the simple present value? Here we have present value, or today value, and also we have the value in the future. This is what we call cash flow future cash flow payment and we have the interest rate as we learned before future cash flow is the present value or principal times one plus interest rate to the power which represents the number of years by cross multiplication we can see that present value is simply the future value discounted and this discount is 1 over 1 plus interest rate to the power n as in this formula. For simple present value we can explain something like this. Assume we start today when the year 0 with $100 and we have the same amount, but we receive it after one year, two years, and in years. What is the present value of all of these 100? They are not equal, because the first year at time zero, it is exactly like the present value, but after one year we divide it by the discount. This is one plus i. For two years, the power would be 2, 
for n years, the power will be n. And in all of these cases, the present value will be decreasing. Here we have in the credit market four different types of instruments. This is simple loan, fixed payment loan, compound bond, discount bond. For yield to maturity, this is the interest rate that equates the present value of cash flow payments received from a debt, an instrument with its value today, which means this is the interest rate make the future cash flow present value exactly equal to the today value or present value today for this loan. Here we have an example of this. For a simple loan, assume that the present value is 100 and the cash flow after one year it is 110, number of years is 1. How can we find the present value according to the previous equation? 100 should equal cash flow divided by 1 plus the interest rate to the power of years. Years here is 1. By cross multiplication, 110 future cash flow should equal the principal 100 times 1 plus interest. If you divide both sides by 100, so that 1 plus interest is equal the cash flow in the future, 110 divided by principal 100. This is will equal 1.1, which means if we subtract 1 from both sides, interest is equal 10%. For simple loans, the simple interest rate equals the yield to maturity. In fixed payment loan, this is mean that we have the same cash flow payment every period throughout the life of the loan, which means that if you get a loan from the bank, they will calculate interest rate for this loan, they will add interest payment to the value of the loan and divide this for the whole life of this loan or maturity. With fixed payment should be paid yearly so that loan value will be this fixed payment divided by discount in each case. For the first year, the power will be 1 for the second, power is 2, and for the last year, the power is n. What about coupon pond? Coupon pond is a pond, and this is like a piece of paper at, at the bottom half of this paper. We have a small coupons. This is divided into small coupons. Each time, assuming that for six months you are going to the company, you give them one of these coupons and they give you the value of these coupons, what we call yearly coupon payment. We refer to this by C in this example. But how can we find the price of coupon bond? To find the price or the present value today, we should know what is the face value of the bond. The value will get at the end of the maturity. The maturity in this case represented by n, which means how many years I will wait until I'm receiving back the face value printed on the bond. So, for price or present value, this exactly like fixed payments from today to the year n, this is coupon, divided each time by 1 plus the interest rate to the power of the year. Don't forget that in last year, we have the following. We have already two things, coupon of the last year and the face value should be paid back so that we can see F 
face value divide by 1 plus the interest rate to the power n. For coupon pond, when the coupon pond is priced at its face value, so we don't have any gain or loss. So the yield to maturity equal the coupon rate. If you're looking for the table at the bottom, we can see that if the price is 1000 and the face value is 1000, the yield to maturity is 10% and the interest rate is 10%. But what could happen in case that the price of pound is greater than its face value, like the case of 1200? You pay it 1200 to receive only 1000 in the future. So for sure, the yield of maturity will not equal 10%, but instead of this, it will be lower because we already have something like loss. In this case, the yield to maturity is 7.13. How can we find this? Simply, we will receive $100. How can we calculate this as a coupon? This is the face value. 1000 times the interest rate 10% it is 100 but I'm not receiving 100 because I paid 1000 I paid 1200 if you divide 100 over 1200 it is approximately 7% the opposite of this in case that we are already getting the pound with discount so that we paying 800 instead of 1000 in this case i will receive a coupon with 100 just because i paid 800 not 1000 if i divide 100 over 800 it is approximately 14% as in the following table in some cases, we have a special case of pound. We call this as console or perpetuity. This is pound with no maturity date. That doesn't triple principal but buys fixed coupon payment forever. Some saying that why people purchasing something like this if they are sure that they will not get back their money. The answer is very simple. We have financial markets, so we can sell this at any time we want to. So it is not a problem to have a maturity or not for this pawn, as long as people are willing to purchase it. And why people purchase it? Because in some cases, they are really looking for a fixed payment or a safe and sure payment forever. Here we can find the price in a very simple equation we will not get back any face value but instead of this we get in coupon so the coupon assume for example this is 100 dollar per year and the interest is 10 percent so we're receiving this because the interest if we divide 100 over 10 percent it will give us 1000 so in this example the price of this coupon will be 1000 What about discount pond? This is an important one of pounds because here we will see that what is the relationship between the interest rate and the price of pound. And this is what we already use in next chapter and the remaining chapter. For any one year, discount pound is already the pound paid with discount, so we expect that the price of the pound will be less than the face value. And this is the return we will receive from this pound. Actually, this is a part of return. And to explain this, assume that. How much is the discount? Discount is the difference between face value and the current price. It is F minus P. If we wanted to transfer this discount to percentage or interest rate, we should divide by the price. 
so that we have I. In this case, I is already calculated as a difference between fixed or face value minus the price divided by the price itself. Here we can see that there is a negative relationship between interest and the price. Price exists in two places in this equation. In numerator, and this is negative. So it has a negative relationship with interest. And also in denominator, which means that when the price is increasing, interest will decrease. So this is a negative relationship. We should distinguish between interest rate and returns. In case of discount bond, we should differentiate between return and interest. Return could be already divided into two parts. The interest, we can calculate it by dividing coupon C over the price P. And this is the first part from this equation. But also, if you will sell this bond before the maturity date, we could sell it by higher price or lower price, comparing with the price we paid at the time T, time of purchasing. The price in the period after this, T plus 1, could be higher or lower. To calculate what we call the capital gain or capital loss this is the difference between price at time t plus one and the price of today this is the gain or loss if we transfer this to a percentage we should divide it by the price bt and we call this is rate of capital gain small g We can see that the return equals yield to maturity only if holding period equal the same time to maturity. Because if we already hold the pound to the end of the maturity, we will get back exactly the face value of this pound. And there is no loss or gain. No capital loss or no capital gain. But what could happen if there is a rise in the interest rate? A rise in interest rate is associated with a fall in bond prices, as we learned it before. According to the inverse relationship between them. But when the bond prices decreased, this will achieve what we call capital loss. especially if the time of maturity is longer than the holding period. The most distant bond maturity, which means if I'm waiting too long for the maturity, so that the greater the size of the percentage price changes associated with the interest rate change, which means when the maturity became already extended, for too long time, this could be associated with a lot of fluctuation in the prices. We will see in next slide that, however, there is interest rate fixed for the pound, there could be a return, positive or negative. And this is linked to what we can call capital gain or capital loss. The disconnection between interest rate and the return is very clear in this table. Let's start at the bottom of this table. But before we do this, we should know that the price is 1000. This is as in the column 3. The initial current yield or 
interest rate is 10% as in column 2. In column 1, we can see different maturities from 1 year to 30 years. In column 4, we can see the price next year. Okay. We start with the bottom of this table when the year is 1. The initial price is 1000, price next year 1000, so there is no gains or loss. In column number 5, we can see that rate of capital gain is 0, so that return or rate of return, which is initial capital year current yield in column 2 plus colon 4 rate of capital gain this will equal 10 exactly equal what about in case of two years in case of two years we have the following Price next year decreased to 917, so we have loss, capital loss, equal $83. If we divide this $83 over initial price, it will become negative 8.3%. If you added this to the 10% of initial current yield, Finally, I have only positive 1.7%. What about for three years of maturity? Price is 503, which means we have capital loss equal 479. Uh, it is 497. If we divide this over initial price 1000, so that the loss is negative 49.7%. If you added this to the initial current yield in column 2, which equal 10%, so finally this is equal negative 39.7% as a return. So, however, the interest rate is positive, but the rate of return could be negative, as we explained here. It is clear that, from previous example, prices and return for long-term bonds are more volatile than those for shorter-term bonds. And this is because the capital gain and capital loss will be smaller in case of short periods, comparing with long periods. Also, there is no any interest rate risk, which means there is no decrease or any difference between the return and the interest rate, as long as we keep the bond to the date of maturity, because in this case we will not face any capital gain or any capital loss. Here we turn to distinguish between what we can call real and nominal interest rate. Nominal interest rate make no allowance for inflation, which means this is the price announced by the bank for depositing money or for bonds in the market or anything like this. But what about real interest rate? This is the nominal interest rate after doing some adjustment to take care about the decrease in the value of this by the impact of a change in the price level or inflation. And this is more accurately reflects the cost of borrowing, real cost of borrowing. Here we have two cases, X and real interest rate which is adjusted for expected changes in the price level. This is for expected, not actual. 
but in case that we have actual changes in price level, this is what we call exposed real interest rate. Because in this case, we do adjustment for actual changes in the price level. And it is very clear that there is a relationship between nominal interest rate, real interest rate, and expected inflation under what we call Fisher equation. According to the Fisher equation, the interest rate which I will receive as a compensation for waiting should cover two things. Real return for me, we call this is real interest rate, this is IR, plus Compensation for the changes in the price in the future, which call it expected inflation rate. This is take the simple pi in Latin with superscript E for expected. In this case, we can see that when the real interest rate is low, there are greater incentives to borrow and the fewer incentive to lend. The real interest rate is better indicator for incentives to borrow and lend in economy. And this is the key concept in Fisher equation. We can write Fisher equation in different way if you're looking for the real interest rate. It is for sure real interest rate is the difference between nominal interest rate and expected inflation rate. In case that expected inflation rate is smaller than nominal interest rate, real interest rate is positive. In case that expected inflation rate is greater than nominal interest rate, so that the real interest rate is negative. Finally, thank you.